Hello and welcome my fellow Wasteland survivors. I'm Dean and it's great to see you guys back for part 5 of my electrical tips and tricks series. Now in this video we're going to be wiring and programming my new lightbox outro. And I've got a lot of tips and a couple of tricks to show you guys. We got some do's, we got some don'ts. And I'm going to kind of show you guys what we can get away with and what we can't get away with. Okay, before we get started, there's a couple of things we need to know. First off, there is only three different types or categories of animations that we can create. Once again, since I have no common frame of reference, I've named them myself. The first one is continuous and this animation is a perfect example of a continuous animation. This is another example of a continuous animation and the only way that you can achieve this type of animation is by wiring your electrical or your lights to alternating switches. Once you've done that then it just depends on how you've programmed them and how you've wired it. You can do this several different ways in each of these categories or types of animations. So, even though these two animations are completely different, they both still fall into the continuous category because of being hooked to the alternating switches, which will continuously cycle between on and off until you turn them off or disconnect them from electric. Now this animation falls under the second category I call recycling. The only way to achieve a recycling animation is by using delayed on or delayed off switches. Once the animation is run completely out, it shuts off, recycles, and then starts the animation over again. You can achieve several different looks using this animation depending upon the way you program them and wire them. This is another example. Just by adding a couple of extra switches I can actually send the animation in reverse while the first animation is in its off cycle. Since there is no power going to the delayed on switches I can actually send power into them from another direction make them work the same way while the first animation is off. Once this second animation has turned off then the first animation comes back on and sends it back the way it originally went. Now we won't be using any recycling animations in our build today but in the fifth video on my electrical tips and tricks I do explain recycling animations in great detail. Now the third and final category is what I call standard it's any animation that is just on. All you've done is just colored the lights. This could fall under lettering or intricate designs and I've seen some pretty cool ones. I think like a dragon, Zelda, Mario, but really other than changing the color of the light box that's about all you can do with the standard animation. Okay now that we got all that out of the way let me show you guys how we can arrange light boxes in pretty much any kind of pattern that you'd like to. Uh, they do snap to one another and it does make it a little bit of a pain in the butt to try to create a pattern or a design. What I'm trying to do is make these light boxes follow the curve of this floor. Now the reason that I am going as high as I'm going is so that I don't have a snapping issue while I'm trying to manually place the next block in, uh, next light in, excuse me. So you'll see me stack them up. I'll make sure the top ones are not connected together. I'll take them all out. I'll adjust this light. Now I'll put another one to the side of it because that will be the next light that we're going to adjust. Once I get it up and it's where, where I want it to be, then I'll go ahead and take all those lights out and adjust the next light accordingly. 
and you could do this in all kinds of patterns. You could do squares and circles, tight circles. I mean, there's a lot of ways you could arrange boxed lighting. Now, in this part here, we're just doing the same thing we've been doing. We're using the bigger light boxes instead. But what's important about this segment is that right there, how we had a snapping issue while we were trying to adjust our lower box. That's why I go a few light boxes higher. That way we're not snapping in while we're trying to uh, position or readjust our light where we'd like it to be. And once I get it to where I'd like it to be, I just go ahead and adjust the next one. Now here in this segment, I have cycling lights up on a makeshift ceiling. I'm ready to group select it and move it into the build. Now I'm about ready to place it down and there we go. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Those lights will look excellent once I get them wired up. Now let's go ahead and wire up one of our first animations. And this is actually the most simplest animation that we can do. This is a continuous animation. We're going to program our delayed on switch for one second. We're going to program the two interval switches to one second on, one second off. Now we'll hook up our delayed switch to one of the interval switches and then I need to put up a neutral connector where we can connect our delayed on switch and one of the alternating switches to it. That way when I hook it to power they both come on instantaneously or at the same time. Now hook up our light boxes on the top row and we'll connect it to power and see how this animation is going to look see if it's going to work out. What I did is I wired every other light box to itself so they should switch from one light box to the next as they turn on. We'll connect in the bottoms and yes they're absolutely working perfect and as you can see when one is on one is off. That's because of the delayed on switch. Now our next animation that we're going to program we already got a glimpse of earlier in this video but let's take a closer look at how we need to program them. First of all, I've got six alternating switches out and I've programmed them to be one second off and five seconds on. Now as a quick reminder, you can program all of your switches at the same time, but the only way that you can do that is if you connect all of your switches individually to your terminal. Now I've already programmed the delayed on switches to one second before they come on. I'm going to connect them in a chain and they're going to remain connected in a chain. That way when I apply power to them, the first one will come on and then one second later the next one. And two, three, four, five. Yes, working perfectly. Now I'll connect these five delayed on switches to five of our interval switches. The sixth interval switch will actually be connected to power as well as one or the first delayed on switch. Now it'll take six seconds before all of our interval switches become active. Let's take a second, freeze the video, and look at this a little closer. These are the first two switches to come on as soon as we start our animation. The first delayed on switch comes on and in one second it will actually generate power. And the interval switch is in its first second of its five second programming. Now that we're in second number two, we can see the first delayed on switch is now on, which in return is powering the second interval switch. The first delayed on switch is also now powering the second delayed on switch which will come on in one second. In second number three we can see in the back row that the second delayed on switch is now on which is powering the third interval switch in the front row as well as the third delayed on switch in the back row which now in one second it will come on and generate power. Second number four will be a repeat, so let's get right to second number five. 
What we can see is in the front row, the first five interval switches are on. What we can't see is in the back row, the fifth and final delayed on switches on and ready to transmit power in second number six. Now here in second number six, we can see that the sixth interval switch in the front row has come on. And the first interval switch on the right hand side is now off because it is finished with its five second programming. Now it will be off for one second. This image also shows us why we use six interval switches but only programmed them at five seconds on. The reason is is because on the sixth second we need a light coming on while the very first interval switch is going off. This is why it's always very important to always add in or calculate in an extra second to your animations. In the electrical tips and tricks number four, I do explain this in great detail. Now, what I'd like to do before we move on is show that you can actually do these animations numerous different ways. What I've got here is the same animation that we just made, but it's only three switches big instead of six. So I've got three interval switches with two delayed on switches in the back. What I did is I programmed the interval switches to be on for two seconds because we have three poles and I'm adding the extra second and then off for one second. And as you can see, the animation is doing the same exact thing as our last animation. It's only two lights long instead of five. Now that I know how my switches are going to work, I've installed them inside the house behind us. And I'm going to use this electrical conduit piping to bring the power out to our light boxes. Now in my electrical tips and tricks video number three, I do explain again in great detail what I'm doing here. But this is a way I'm going to be able to bring all of the power from those interval switches out to the light boxes without having a bunch of wires hanging out all over the place. Now I did make a change to our animation. Instead of six interval switches, which gave us five lights in between our animation, I've dropped it down to five interval switches, which now gives us four lights in between our animation. Now let's just go ahead and connect everything up. Okay, I didn't want to bore you guys with connecting all the wires up, so we're just going to look at it after I've wired it all up. Basically what's going on here is every five lights is connected to a conduit junction. And then it repeats itself over the next five lights. And I do this all the way around the outside edge of this particular light box animation. Now the lettering nasty bones in the center is just all connected together. It's not going to actually have any kind of movement. It's just going to be on. In other words, it will be just a regular animation. Here we can see the five different light boxes connected to the lower conduit junctions and how it repeats itself over and over and over again all the way around this entire light box chain. Also, we can see on the floor the reason why I used multiple conduit junctions instead of just using five. I didn't want to have, I think there's 183 light boxes connected up here, uh, all to just five junctions. Plus, now they're connected to our uh, junctions that go into the house where our, our switches are at. Now I've placed some barn walls behind our light boxes to help hide all the wiring going up to them. Also, I do have two cycling lights on the wall which will help create kind of a background glow. And yeah, you can see it. It's kind of yellow on that wall there. And now that the power is on, we get our first look at our hard work of programming these animations. And yes, I'm very, very happy with the way this is turning out so far. Now our next animation is going to be quite large. It's going to be 35 light boxes wide by 49 light boxes tall. The total amount of light boxes it'll take to make this animation 
will be 1,355 light boxes. Also, it took one and one quarter the build size here at Taffling Boathouse to actually build them. Also, another thing that I found quite interesting was that it took just a little over one entire build size just to wire all these light boxes together. The total amount of build size just to build this skull was almost two and a half times the size that you can build in here at Tafling. Now to create the type of animation I want to use it'll take 16 interval switches but it'll only take 15 delayed on switches to do it. I will connect two random lines of light boxes in our animation to each one of the interval switches. There are 16 interval switches and if you times that by two that makes 32 rows on our light box animation. Now it is 35 rows wide but the two outside rows are a border so we can take those off. They'll always be on. Plus the center row going up the middle of our light box animation will always be on as well. So if we take those three off of 35 it is 32 light boxes wide. That's why I'm using 16 switches to run this animation. Okay, as I put these delayed on switches out, let's take a second and talk about what's going on here. Just in case I'm losing you or you're starting to get confused. But if you'll remember back a few segments ago where we programmed the animation that had six interval switches and five delayed on switches, this animation is exactly the same thing. The difference is, is instead of six interval switches, we now have 16. Instead of five delayed on switches, we now have 15. They will be wired and uh, connected exactly the same way as we did in the last animation. We'll connect all of the delayed on switches together, creating one long chain. Then we'll connect all of the delayed on switches to each one of the interval switches except for the very first interval switch. It will be connected directly to power as well as the very first delayed on switch. Okay, now for our favorite part, programming all these switches. So let's start off with the delayed on switches. What I did is I programmed them for one fourth second before they come on. There's only 15 switches, but we have to take into consideration that as soon as the power came on, it took one fourth of a second before the first delayed on switch came on. So we actually need to times that number by 16 which equals four seconds. Now remember we always add on an extra second. So with that extra second added on to the four we are now at five seconds. So it should take five seconds for all of our delayed on switches to turn on or become active. So let's go ahead and see if our calculations are correct and we'll try to count it out. Start one two, three, four, five. Okay, it seems like it's somewhere around five. I did time it with the stopwatch and it turned out to be 5.48 seconds. So it's almost a half a second more than what we calculated. Because we sized glitched this settlement more than four times, it's taking an extra one and a half seconds for the delayed on switches to fully become active. Now this animation does have three segments in it. And only thing that this will affect is the duration of each one of those three segments. And we'll see those changes here in a second. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about the interval switches and how I programmed them. What I did is I programmed them for 10 seconds on four seconds off. Because I had calculated five seconds being uh, what it was going to take the delayed on switches to turn on, 
I decided I wanted at least one second less so the animation didn't fully go off before the first interval switches started coming back on. This animation will have three cycles to it. The first cycle is what it takes for the delayed on switches to all come on. At the end of five seconds, the second cycle would start and all the light boxes would be on. That then at the end of another specific amount of time, the interval switches would start going off, which would create the third cycle. Now, the reason that I wanted the four seconds is so that in between the beginning and the end cycles, the light boxes would not be fully off. At any given time, there would be at least eight light boxes on in the animation. Okay, let's take a look at the first cycle in slow motion. Two lights should be coming on at a time. But because we size glitch this settlement so much, the frame rates are having a hard time showing two lights, uh, two rows of light boxes on, coming on at a time. Sometimes four come on, sometimes six come on. It's just the game trying to catch up. It took six seconds for it to reach the end of the first cycle. This is the second cycle where all of the light boxes are on. This cycle was supposed to last for five seconds. Now the third cycle is all the lights going off until it reaches just a few light boxes which were supposed to be eight. But I froze the frame here and as you can see there are actually ten light boxes on. The reason is is we're off by that half a second and it almost has 12 on because we're that close to the half a second. And now let's just go ahead and watch the animation in real time. And even though it's off and our calculations are, you know, slightly wrong because of the frame rate issues, it's still working excellent. The only thing that I, that I really see wrong with this is the durations of each one of the three cycles are just slightly off. A couple are a little longer, one is a little shorter. Well, all my wasteland friends, I really hope that I was able to explain what we did here today in a very understandable way. There is so much to know about programming these switches and making these animations that it was extremely tough getting the right information in and it not sounding like a bunch of gibberish. All right, everybody, thank you for watching today. I do appreciate your precious time very, very much. And just like always, until next time, please stay safe and peace.